Hi, welcome to this Open Security Summit in September 2021. Uh, we have Timo Pagel, who's going to do another really critical presentation about how to securely scan your production images, which if anybody here or watching has to deploy images in production and has to maintain those, knows that it's not a trivial exercise to do. So Tim, over to you. Thank you for the nice introduction. Uh, what what I will present uh, is the is the story I went through by creating this tool cluster image scanner. Uh, I did it together uh, with a company called SDSE, which is uh, helping insurances to digitalize their systems. We had already one uh, session here at the summit where I presented the concepts. So I will today go more quickly um, through the things we have discussed last time. Uh, so that we uh, can focus on the new things. So the first question you might have in mind, based on the last um, on the last session we had here, is um, where do I find this tool? Because it has been released now as open source. Um, you can find it obviously on GitHub. So you can find it here under SDASE cluster image scanner. So you also recognize that the name is not good uh, before it is was named, uh, as you can see it here, cluster scanner. Uh, but now we edit image here because it's focusing on the images. So before, and it was a bit confusing for some people who haven't listened uh, carefully when I explained what it is. So now, uh, based on the name, it is uh, more easy to grab. So for the ones who wasn't there last time, I will give you a short introduction what it is. So um, what we would like to reach is that the images which we are having in production are getting uh, scanned, scanned for things like security misconfigurations or known vulnerabilities. And obviously, when we talk about vulnerabilities, somehow we need to inform the people who are actually using the images. In addition to informing developers about misconfigurations and non vulnerability, also it's useful for operators. For example, uh, reporting the lifetime of an image so that they can uh, get informed after n days to uh, react. So N stands for any number you can imagine. It could also be something like 200 days, um, depending on, on the image you're using. This uh, is the architecture overview. Um, on the left, you see that you have to install a collector, an image collector in each Kubernetes cluster you're using. And then the image collector will grab all images which are running in the cluster in each namespace. We'll figure out which teams are related to them, to, to that images, and publish that information on GitHub so that the or so called orchestrator can pick that up. Uh, and it will uh, download the images from the registry and then scan it. For example, one scan here, you can, which you can see is a dependency check. And other scan is the image lifetime check. Afterwards, that will go into Defect Dojo. And then um, in Defect Dojo, we use as a vulnerability management system. Uh, so you can, as a developer, handle the vulnerabilities there, respond to them. Um, and the misconfigurations. And in case it hasn't been handled so far, uh, you can send out uh, an email or you inform with a messenger like Slack and then the information goes to um, the, the developer or the operations guy. Um, Slack can be configured uh, as an annotation, for example, which channel it is or which team will be based so that you get the information in each channel uh, independently for different teams. Are there questions so far? Okay, you're always free to ask. You can always stop me and say, hey, I have a question or something in mind, and then we can uh, directly discuss it. So this is uh, the journey uh, we went through. We started with the Jenkins uh, 
plugin for the dependency check that was uh, not so good because the vulnerabilities haven't been uh, there was just a threshold, so that was, is a very bad approach to set a threshold, and you you don't pin on the vulnerability that you actually have handled it. So that's why we then use defect dojo here. Um, and afterwards, I have recognized, my, wow, we're scanning only what is uh, in master to what should be in production. Well, um, then I made one step further to go to customize, um, to scan that. Um, but I have identified the teams are using um, different deployment technique and it was hard to figure out the actual images based on customize. So um, I enhanced that too. Uh, so that I actually used um, the things which are in production based on this image collector, which I have shown you. Um, and in addition, uh, in the first versions, I used the virtual machine for everything. Now it's all, all completely operated also in the Kubernetes cluster. And that is when this cluster image scanner was born. Um, so then I used only the dependency check to scan uh, the images. Then um, I personally have uh, the conclusion for vulnerability for vulnerabilities in the images of the of the distribution. Um, I think that is not so useful to identify them. It would be very easy to integrate that scan into the cluster image scanner, but from my point of view, that is not useful because the only thing you will do is wait for a patch. So what I would like to do is to enhance uh, the lifetime. Uh, and no, to, to enhance the patching so that the um, lifetime gets reduced. So that's why I created this uh, image lifetime check, which checks when has this image been created. And in case it's uh, over n days, then we will inform the developer or the, the operations. How is this working? This is a check which you haven't seen the last presentation. I think it's it's a new one. Um, uh, or no, it was there last time also, but I didn't explain it in this great detail. So here we go to explain it because there are some interesting things and enhancement based on this. So this is basic uh, Docker knowledge or container knowledge. You have uh, different layers. You have the image layer one, you have a layer two, a layer three. Um, and in the end, you put your project layer on top. Uh, each of them have different build dates. And what I do here with, with the, what the cluster scanner does is just checking the, the latest layer, which is built on top. So that's very straightforward here. Um, then we added the distress check. We also had a session about distress uh, at the Open Security Summit. So you can check that out to get more information what distress is. This uh, check just checks uh, for different shells if they are there and reports in case there is a shell. Hey, this might not be distress. I assure you that um, uh, want to have it like that. Uh, the the cluster image scanner images itself actually use bash to there. Uh, it will always create false positives, for example. This is an explanation of uh, distress, but please uh, take a look at, uh, at the session we had here in case you're more interested in that. Then we have uh, the root check. So easy image potentially running as root. Uh, because there is no, you, I think you all know there is this user, right? So with that, you can change that um, an image is running as uh, a different user. Currently, it just checks the images. It doesn't compare it how the, the image is started in the cluster itself. That is an enhancement uh, which, I, which we have to add in the future. And now we come to the enhancement of the image lifetime check. And that is a base image lifetime check. Do you have an idea what it does? Check that the containers are ephemeral, that they die after half an hour, an hour, a day, however long you want them to be. Maybe. Oh. 
I will I will resolve it. Um, so this was uh, on the top. You see the image lifetime here. So that was uh, when the image got built. But uh, you all remember that in an image you have to save from. So you have these from, and then you say my base image. And you say, give it a tag like one dot one dot one. So what I see is that often, especially developers forget to update these uh, tag here. So everyone says we want to pin, we don't want to take the risk that an image, uh, a new image version will break something in the application. That's why we pin, but then they, they very, uh, they, they mostly don't enhance this. Even when they create a new version to, to release, often they forget to, very often they forget to update uh, this tag here. So I thought about how can I automate this because I don't want to manually look into uh, the, the images. Um, so that's what I'm doing here. Uh, we have on the, uh, on the bottom, the base image layer, and I'm just checking the latest one. That was at least my first approach to do that like that. Um, because the world is not so easy. You, all, you have often an official distribution image and then CentOS, they can be three months old, for example. So, uh, and, and they, they do have documented that also on the, on the, um, on Docker Hub. So what I actually need is not this state here. What I need is when someone does a yum update, when one of the layers is yum update performed, that is also valid, right? Because what I want is that the base layer is up to date. And when there's a yum update or up, uh, upgrade performed or something like that, up, great then it's okay for me only in case this is missing it then i uh, the, the the official the, the latest um uh, the, no the first image here should be used at uh, the first image uh, uh, layer so this is what i'm doing when there is an yum update in one of the uh the layers here then that image then that date is used otherwise here the first layer is used the creation date of that one that is a test which which I created, for example, easily with uh, Scopio. How can you tell that? It, Sorry. How, how can you tell what version you're you're validating? So, if Yum itself updated itself in the layer one, which image are you validating is correct? So, if the base image layer one is updating the Yum application itself and the official distribution image has yum as an older version how does your how does this application tell which one it's evaluating is it just yeah, going the, the, the first layer of it finds yum update uh, that is where okay. i grab the, the build date from so in case here would be yum update too you know you can do it multiple times obviously in this row so here would be yum update uh, also, then uh, it would take this build date here and not this one here. Okay, thank you. What we don't get with, with what I couldn't figure out is actually how the base image is named. You only get the, the, the digest, you don't get uh, uh, the name of the base layer, unfortunately. So that is something you would need to to to, to label in this here. What is uh, actually used um, base image layer here? But that so far no one does. So it's uh, it's it's not an option to to scan the, the the base image itself. So I have just have the layers and the creation date and the um, the things which has performed inside. So that's how I figured out. Yeah, this one is something which bothers the developers a lot. <laughs> I can tell you that in case you will ever try to do that, you will figure out how horrible uh, your patch management is. 
or we can also see it from a positive side of view. You can uh, highlight how the world looks and where there are uh, possible areas of improvement. Okay, um, that was the base image lifetime uh, check. Another one is a new version. So this one here uh, is uh, very close to this one here. So sometimes you have to think which one you want to use. Um, the new version check, as it says, it's checking for new versions uh, of that image. It It is not very intelligent. So um, uh, there are unfortunately multiple ways how you can uh, tag your images. So we can take a look at Quay.io and how the cluster scanner uh, is actually done to, to get an idea um, what is possible and what not. Uh, we can take any one scan. Oh, we are talking about new version, so we will take the new version. And what I'm doing here is using semantic versioning. So with semantic versioning, it's obvious uh, that, no, it's obviously not so obvious uh, here. Uh, mostly you increase it by one. So you have two, zero, 514, and then comes 15, 16, and so on. So, um, it's unfortunately here not the case because I'm using the GitHub build number to enhance the images. I will have to think about how to get this better aligned um, here, uh, but normally it's, in, it's uh, incremented uh, by one. So what I can do is uh, just check uh, major, for example, here is getting checked from one to two beforehand. Uh, so we have to start as life. We have uh, an image named image uh, with a tag one zero one. Then we can first uh, increment here by one, see if that one is there, then we increment here. Uh, and in, uh, then we can create here the major one. So first the patch, what comes in, my, then the minor and then uh, the major version always just by one. Um, and then we uh, get the information from the registry. Um, what I also have performed because uh, when you're, especially when you go against Docker Hub, you have a rate limit. So um, to reduce the pulls, uh, I filter out only the things which, are ex which actually need to be um, checked, I can also add more here, right? So in case I say, I, I don't want to filter only this, I want to add some specific images, uh, you can add more here, that is no problem. Um, and I'm also, when I figure out here, there is uh, this one here actually, I uh, confirmed that there is an image uh, with the tag 101, then I don't check if there is also um, a minor version enhancement. Um, so that's already enough to say there is a new version. I don't try to figure out more. What I have seen today, which I wasn't aware of. Let me quickly see if I can repeat that. Yeah, there is, uh, so it's Copio here. It's uh, has a nice command uh, to fetch uh, the repo text. So um, maybe uh, I will include this in the future that, that I get, so that this is only one pull against the registry. And then I get all this information and I can uh, figure out the real latest version which should be used. So that is a future enhancement. I wasn't aware that uh, Scopio can do that. Yeah, and uh, last scan I added is here the malware check. So it scans for malware 
currently it scans with uh, with every day so i the, the I, I perform the scans every day um so the Marvia scans also runs every day but i have also figured out that maybe every day is not needed because it is obviously a very resource intensive uh, scan so i will think about if uh how to handle that one approach which i have in mind is caching because i have already caching enabled for the results so one option might be uh that we just enhance the caching here from four days to uh uh, from from one day to to seven days, for example, so that uh, the malware scan doesn't get performed so often. We have already uh, I know other questions regarding the scans which are here possible. Do you have a wish for another scan which is not here right now? I don't think so. I think the biggest challenge is handling all that you already received from this output, right? What is the biggest challenge? The, the biggest challenge is uh, handling all this output. So yeah, correct. <laughs> hundreds of uh, I know Node.js dependencies in each lifetime will tell you there's um, I know three new versions. If you're not doing distroless, um, yeah, to start doing that root containers. I mean, you could do some other things but those are already taken care of by by other tools like semgrep yeah you 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 actually have a lot of options uh for example you can easily disable this uh just to the scan so in the collector you can define for this cluster what checks should be by default enabled or and disabled <laughs> So by that, when you say we are not following distroless here in our organization right now, uh, you can disable the distroless uh, scan in the in the collector configuration, and then you don't get uh, informed about distroless anymore. So you can find uh, find you in that. I will also tell you later uh, how you can do it on object level, for example, or on on the namespace level. So you can change the default configuration. When you when you say mostly I don't want this scan, but here in this specific namespace I want to enable it for all images inside. That's also possible. Yeah, it's, um, I mean it looks great. I'm just worried whether the developers I work with will understand everything. I'm having a, tr a hard time getting them to use dependency check and patch things that just need to be updated. Uh, all the rest will just decrease it cognitive load of this game. Dependency actually is very, very helpful uh, because I didn't want to tell the developer how to solve the patching issues. So, I mean, the solution in case you're using GitHub or GitLab or one of these vendors is obviously Dependabot. Um, but when I come and say, please implement Dependabot and uh, uh, patch very fast, and I, uh, it's... Uh, they will say, yeah, but we don't know if there is a, is a vulnerability inside and so on. So when you have dependency check, then you can show here there is a, um, a vulnerability. And since I'm using the dependency check and publishing the results every day, um, they implemented the dependent bot. And since then, the, the uh, rate of findings went down a lot. So beforehand, there was a lot of findings. Um, and now there is zero finding and no information at all because it's they, they patch already by themselves. They, they recognize the problem. They, they implemented Dependa, Dependa bot to patch out to, to, to get pull, pull requests for uh, dependent for new dependencies in the code. And now there is nothing coming, nothing. <laughs> that is so great. I thought already, is there something broken? And then I, I, I researched for half a day and figured out, oh, no, there is some, nothing broken. They are just patching well. <laughs> Um, that's a happy story, a success story. Yeah, definitely. I would say that is a, is a definitely a success story for the dependency check. Um, where I'm struggling um, is this one here. With, uh, they don't take that so serious. From my point of view, they should take it more serious. Yeah, we should patch one day. 
<laughs> in some organizations, not not, uh, not I, I implemented this too in, in different at different customers, and at some organizations there are some teams which are not taking it uh, so serious. So I'm working on that. Later, actually, I have some questions for you regarding that. How, what is the best way to inform uh, teams here? But first, I would like to cover some more things about the. Uh, uh, this tool itself, and I would also like to give you a demo so you can better, so we can have a better discussion on it. So here is a more detailed architecture. Um, we have the uh, collector, which is pushing it, uh, the results in GitHub uh, to, together with the cluster. Uh, the, the results, the, the images together with uh, the cluster, the teams and the stack channel or the email. Uh, then we have the, the, this GitHub directory, uh, which is getting fetched by the scanner. Um, and the scanner has all these different checks. For example, the dependency check has the suppressions XML. Uh, with that, you can pre-define already some things which shouldn't get, uh, which the the, user uh, with the dependency check shouldn't uh, analyze at all, or it should suppress the findings. Then it goes to the vulnerability measurement system. That is where we actually want to do the things. Um, I would say the suppressions file here is deprecated because there is a new feature, uh, which is called bulk acceptance uh, in defect order. So you don't need the suppressions XML at all anymore. Um, then you have the, all the other different scans they will all upload their results in the vulnerability management system. Then the results go in another directory and then we have the notifier, which is sending out the information uh, to the target groups. Uh, this is the image collector. We went through it last time uh, in more detail. So that's why I won't go in so much detail here. Uh, it's better when we talk about how to configure the image collector in this session. The storage architecture we uh, talked about last time also uh, in a more greater detail. Um, what I have, I figure, um, as you can see here, we have the job orchestrator, which is um, preparing the image. Actually, that is currently the, uh, I think it's called image fetcher. Image fetcher is how this is called. Um, and what we are using currently is that we extract the image and pack it as a tar and put that into a persistent volume. Actually, this one here is an EFS um, in AWS. Um, so it, it, we thought it should be read, write many so that it independent from the node, uh, you will uh, read, write uh, many independent from the node, you have access to always the same information to the same tar. Um, but uh, what we have figured out, and then this uh, tar is getting picked up by the scanners and then the results are getting placed in another persistent volume and then it gets uploaded to Defect Dojo so you can take a look at it at Defect Dojo. So the problems which, I just, which, which, which we are having currently with this approach is that sometimes pots are not scanning because they are waiting for the mount um, and that the tar extraction itself is creating heavy load uh, and heavy um, I/O operations on the nodes, so that is slowing down the nodes a lot. Uh, so we are thinking here uh, about to go back to the standard uh, read-write. Uh, is it once? I think it's read-write once. Uh, PVC. We will make more tests here, and then we might change uh, that. So your scan result can look like this. You uh, take a look at it, can, it it's, it's a JSON, and then it has information like when it started, when it finished, how the DOP status is, other findings, and so on. Um, last time we talked about how can we do this, and we uh, went through to Argo workflows. So the real process is now in Argo workflows, as you will see in the demonstration in a few minutes.
yeah, we have Slack notifications. We still have Slack notifications. Um, they are a bit enhanced now. Uh, I can't show it because I have it only at at uh, customers um, in, at customer side the Slack. But uh, basically, you have here also the information um, of the cluster. In which cluster is it? Which namespace is it? Uh, namespace, what else do you have? And you have a button to click on. So a nice button where you can click uh, handle findings, it's inside. In case you're interested, I could make a screenshot and show it here. Let me quickly do that. I think that will be look much better than my crappy. Uh, I think that'd probably be quite helpful. Yeah, it should it should be um, a test message. I I am I think it wouldn't be good if I show you production data. Uh, but I just created uh, before this some scans which created some test data for us. So this is such a message. And now I need something like GIMP where I can paste it. Here we go. So this is how it looks uh, in Slack. So you have, for example, the base image age is uh, greater than 14 days. In Swagger IPI pet store in version 1.0.3, uh, you get more information here, potential unhealthy vulnerabilities or misconfiguration found in the image. Uh, image is running as root user when started without explicit user section. And then you get here again, the, the information cluster namespace and the scan job uh, status. Uh, oh, that's in German, uh, show more it says. Uh, but there's not so much more to see. And then uh, we have here, ah, okay, that's uh, twice the same thing. Maybe again, the image uh, and, and the cluster. Okay, so that is the, the image, uh, the, 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 the Slack, how it looks in Slack. You can also send out an email uh, as an alternative in case you're not using Slack in your organization. Here we are having uh, the contact information so you can add um, annotations to your um, namespace. So you can define who is responsible for this namespace uh, and add also the email address or the a Slack channel so that you get, um, so that you can get informed. Obviously, you don't find this information only in my slides. You will also find it uh, in GitHub in the folder docs. Um, I have structured it in a way that it is uh, for the other, in case you are interested in the architecture, you can click here. In case you're interested in the deployment, you can click here. In case you're more interested in development, you can click here and so on. These are just uh, uh, images which are sometimes I refer to. And in the user, uh, you can find configuration which you perform, information how to handle defect dojo, uh, and the different scans we're having. So in configuration here, uh, you find all the different configurations. So this is what we have seen on the slide here. You can use email, you can use a team in case you're just having a team. Um, uh, the cluster image scanner collector will automatically identify uh, the team and uh, add something to the end. So here would be the fellowship of the ring uh, minus uh, security. So these post fix you can also define in the collector settings what it should be uh, in default, uh, but most teams use different post fixes. So they mostly have to anyway add um, the correct the, the concrete Slack channel, and you can add some more other you can add some other configurations as well. This is what I. Uh, set beforehand, you have the collector, you set some uh, environment variables on the collector, like default team name. Um, so in case you have an operations team and different project teams, it might make sense that you say, okay, my operations team here, that it's the default and all the others um, uh, have to define it on the namespace. It would all, this, this approach would also uh, put the, the, the responsibility of uh, telling the 
themes which are which forget, forgot uh, to add annotations um, uh, to the operations team. So I I came in the end I came to the conclusion that that is not so useful. So what I add here is nobody, and I have a nobody a channel where I check when there is something uh, reported. Then I go to the teams and say who is responsible here. Um, or I go to the manage management and ask them who's responsible for this so that uh, I don't put this work on others. Um, then you can on the namespace, as I said, add uh, the responsible team or also on a pot level, you can add the responsible team in case you want to overwrite uh, the namespace level. Uh, this is what I told you. Uh, you have here a git. Uh, here on this image, you, you see also that you could uh, also create uh, repositories manually. Uh, so you just need to follow the structure how an image uh, is getting, um, how an image. Uh, yeah, these, you have to follow the structure of the interface. You can see one here. How is the collect, what is the collector actually doing? So these are test images um, which can be used by the orchestrators. So here we see the structure. What is the collector doing? Uh, we have the image here. We have the image ID. This is the Slack channel. Uh, if it should be skipped or not. Um, now it's too late to change it. When I started, I thought everything will be enabled and very rarely it will not be enabled. So that's why it's called skip and not active. Now I wish I, it would be called active, but it's it's used already a lot. So it's I think it's hard to change. Then we have here team uh, and uh, this is derived from the image name. So you could bundle uh, with a label um, that all images in that folder belong to Argo CD. So then it would be uh, Argo CD, but otherwise it not, it, it takes uh, the image name. So uh, uh, what else do we have? Then we have the namespace here. Uh, we have the email here. We have um, the different scans, if they are enabled or not. Um, and then we have scan lifetime max days. So that is the specific configurations for the lifetime and the base image lifetime scan. In case it's not configured here, uh, here are some scans missing, I think. Uh, the new version, for example, then the default is used. Uh, but when you're actually using this, so this is created manually, that's why it's not here. But when you're actually using the cluster image collector, it will be updated uh, and will in include also the new version uh, scan, for example. Questions so far? No, I don't think there's any. Yeah, you can use different clusters. And uh, a new feature is that you can also use it in a kind of multi-tenant uh, deployment um, so that you can uh, you have one, uh, one cluster scanner uh, engine here, which is performing the scans. And, uh, but you have different target defect dojos, for example, different target Slack channels uh, and so on. So that is now easily possible because it's all in customized. You can, uh, and you have parameters in which you schedule the uh, job. I will quickly show that uh, here. So you go to, now we have, you can, orchestrated. Normally you would have a, a cron job. This is here just um, a workflow, uh, but it could be also in a cron job. And here you can have everything parameterized. So you can say, okay, uh, my my GitHub uh, is in the, in the secret GitHub. And when you have multiple clients, you can say, uh, or, or multi tenants, you can say tenant one, two, three, and so on. So that is now all configurable where the information is coming from. It just needs to be in the same namespace. Uh, 
that's what I said. You have, uh, you will have not in the end, you won't have workflows. You will have cron workflows because you want to you run it periodically every day. So you can have cron workflow uh, for um, customer or tenant A and one for B, and you refer to the different um, secrets in Kubernetes, and then they will be used and the right uh, tenant will be informed about vulnerabilities. We talked about the label inheritance already. Uh, another new feature, I will look at the time. Yeah, I think we can do that. Another new feature is an asset catalog. So um, I thought, how can we get a catalog that is up to date? And uh, the so that is something which you will have as a requirement for an information security system, uh, information security management system, uh, which says you should have an catalog, you need asset catalog, you need to know where what is running. So uh, instead of letting the teams do that manually, uh, I thought it would be nice to use these asset, asset catalog because all the assets um, or all the software is deployed in Kubernetes. So some part of these asset, asset catalog, we can automate by saying this is deployed there and this is deployed there. Um, so that's uh, what we do is there to, to have these asset catalog, um, it's obviously to prepare for an audit. Uh, we also uh, need to have the information, uh, what is this asset used for? So we need a description. So that's why you have here, let me go back to the uh, Firefox to the documentation. This is the uh, description uh, which you can add. So it's an annotation, you edit, and you can describe what is in that namespace. So it can be very briefly, you just need to describe why it is there what, um, in one, two sentences. And what you get out, if, as you have already the teams, you have, uh, uh, and you can also add annotations which where the uh, repository is, where the source code is for that, uh, um, for that deployments um, or for the for the application for the application that is a better word for the application um, you you ref just reference it uh, then you can also see what, where it is deployed and uh, you could also get an overview of the findings but I think this one here is just uh, is an extra an extra because I would do this in defect dojo this is uh, where I would do it. Uh, so these are the different things you could add. You can have this team uh, annotation. You can have an annotation for the source URL. You add, can add a branch if you would like that uh, and a release version. And uh, then you have um, maybe labels like Kubernetes name and version. And then uh, you have a very precise asset catalog. Most important, I would say is this one here for with a description. Um, and as not all teams are doing it, uh, there's also a file called, um, which uh, a folder, which is called description in this um, target GitHub folder where the, um, which, which is the, I've shown you kind of here. So this is the interface, right? Between the collector and the scanner. Uh, there are all these, there's this uh, JSON, it's called, it's called output JSON inside. And next to it is a folder description in which are uh, the missing, um, the, the namespaces are listed in which there is no description annotation. Just a question. Is the annotation something that resides in Kubernetes and it's in the YAML deployment file. Is it something that resides in a special JSON file in the in the repository, or, or where does this annotation is read from? Who, who keeps it? Me as the security person, the developing team. Who keeps track of that? Uh, in in my case, uh, it's the information security officer who is interested in the asset catalog. So he, uh, I just gave him the option to see who has this annotation and who doesn't have it. And based on that, he will go to the teams and tell them you don't have a description. We need that for the asset catalog, please edit. Okay, and this annotation is in the Git repository. I know uh, it's, yeah, I mean, it depends on how you want to see it. Uh, where the, re so that is what people might say, right? Uh, 
I have the description already somewhere else. Why do I need to put it now into into it's it's in the deployment, right? You have to add that into your uh, deployment of your so it's a Kubernetes annotation. So in the deployment, you have to add this annotation. But you can also, from my point of view, it's you just extract it from the source, whatever it is, like a README, and then you put it into uh, into the annotation in the uh, in the Kubernetes. Uh, let me quickly check to make it more transparent. If I have annotations already in my example here. So this is just a WordPress, I, which I'm sometimes scan when I do tests. Uh, yeah, here we could, could easily edit. Um, then you will have a better picture of where it is exactly and how it looks. Uh, we said it need to be named like this one. So we grab it from here. Uh, so you would edit here, my service description. So this is kind of a WordPress to present you to it. Um, and now when you deploy this application in the namespace, you have this description and then the, you, it will be uh, in your asset catalog. Uh, it's hard to explain without an example. I see that already. Um, let me see if I have. I can follow. It's okay. Uh, no, no, I understand now where it has to be kept. So it's in the definition of the namespace that we have to make the description. Yeah, exactly. So you have, yeah. Yeah, in the, in the okay. yeah, so that will end up in Kubernetes. And here is my test uh, repository in which I push uh, the information afterwards. And you see here, this is a real output. So here you get, as you can see here, are all the scans, uh, this one here, I need to update. Um, yeah, okay, it's, it's old, so that is already fixed. Um, but this here, are all the different scans inside, uh, which has been enabled 13 days back. And here is this asset catalog. You have this description, then you have here missing service description. And as you can see, uh, we have here this WordPress, in my test and it didn't have in our, these description annotations, so it shows it doesn't have it. And here uh, we have uh, things where there is an annotation. Actually, this is not from an annotation. You have also have a configuration file. So when you have multiple clusters, you can say, okay, Argo CD always uh, uh, is for the operations team and it has this description. So then uh, this one here will be taken and you don't need to annotate it in your um, clusters because when I talked with the operations, they said sometimes we are using Helm charts and it will be very difficult to add annotations uh, for third party uh, Helm charts. So that's um, why uh, we came up, okay, we, we need a configuration file where you can add such things for the third party uh, deployments. Yeah, this is actually not correct. This is used uh, for, for other things, but just an example, right? Okay. So that was the asset catalog. Now we are already coming to an end. So I would like to present uh, the cluster image scanner in action. So you get a, an idea. Um, so it's based on Argo workflows. So we are having uh, first here, uh, this is an overview. Uh, this is the orchestrator which gets uh, started here. It fetches uh, the image list. Um, so I have configured um, in this case that this public uh, image list should be downloaded and everything in the repository which have seen uh, in the test uh, repository in here, all the different, all the files in here will be downloaded and all the JSONs uh, will be uh, extracted. Uh, uh, into the merge JSON here. Then afterwards, um, multiple workloads will be spawned uh, in this run subflow. So it will go through the image list and uh, start here all the different uh, jobs. You can take a look here. Um, let us take an example, this one here. So 
Uh, this here is um, a scan this is where we have first the so-called image fetcher, um, which is uh, downloading the image here. So this is actually um, a test um, uh, with the with the with an iCar image. So in there is is a test uh, Marve file. So that we can also see some findings. Um, it will download all the things here. We see that it uh, has downloaded the image and now it's extracting all the different uh, layers. Uh, and um, then it says, okay, I'm done. And now all the other scans here can start, uh, perform their uh, scans. Uh, so this one here, for example, in this case, I, I scanned, I uh, know I, I didn't scan because uh, this scan here is uh, skipped. Um, and let us check some others. So here uh, we see, for example, that the base image lifetime check is enabled and the uh, age of the base image is 63 days. And uh, this is a so-called result JSON. Yeah, all these uh, these things are here uh, are custom scans. So in Defect Dojo, in case you have something like dependency, that is a scan which is already in Defect Dojo inside. So that's why this one here is separate uh, because it's performed the scan and then it's getting uploaded into uh, Defect Dojo as a dependency check scan. All these here are self-created scans. So what I'm using is the generic upload in Defect Dojo uh, and um, I first combine all results. Uh, that is what is performed here in these uh, results collect generic findings. And afterwards they're getting uploaded to Defect Dojo. Um, as we are not having access to Slack here right now, um, I, you have to imagine that afterwards it goes to a defect dojo. I will uh, open this page for us uh, so that we can go back to this one later. Um, so now when all the scans are done, uh, we go back to the orchestrator. This is where the scans are performed. So now the teams are getting notified. And in case it's uh, configured, you can also have a GitHub upload with all these, uh, where all the result JSONs are combined in one file. So you uh, know where all the result JSONs are getting pushed to. Um, this is not configured here. That's why it's failing. Um, you also saw here one failed job here. This one is also just for testing purposes. This is a non-existing uh, image. So that's why this one is red. Um, in this notification uh, task, uh, all the teams are getting notified, for example, via email or with Slack. Uh, and then they get the message we have seen and then they can click on, on the handle potential findings. Then they end up here in Defect Dojo. And uh, this is where they will go to for this specific uh, scan. It was a Marvia scan and the base image scan um, enabled uh, for, for uh, this yeah, test cluster for the pet store in it. Uh, for the, actually it's a namespace pet store prod uh, and the pet store image. Um, we also see here the version of the image. So this the version here is uh, 1.0.1. And um, you can also see the same information here. And uh, here are the, the findings for it. Um, in the notification, you will actually, as every finding is uh, shown separately, you will directly end up in the specific finding. And then you see here information, um, potential marvel found in this image. Uh, please take a look at uh, all the findings here. So this is just um, the copy of the summary of Flammerfall. And yeah, there's uh, currently no impact and mitigation, uh, but that are information which will later uh, be fetched from the configuration here, uh, from the documentation here, the scans description. And I will, I'm working already on it that I pass the information out here is a Marvel one, so that uh, here's a more detailed description so that this one will actually show up in Defect Dojo. Um, 
oh sorry uh here we are and here in the base image h check um you also get this information so do you have any questions so far Otherwise, I do have questions for you. I heard uh, that we are able to extend a bit, so I would try to use the time. Let me go back to, because now it's getting interesting uh, to get your thoughts. So we have the different scans. Uh, the different scans are shown uh, here. Uh, here, these are the different scans. And what I'm wondering is, which critically which uh, severity should i assign to this scans and how often should i inform the teams um there you can have different opinions because in defect dojo itself what you do is uh, what you could what you no, this one here i would like to have what you can do is uh, first you go to the uh to the original finding and now you have the different options to handle it right you could for example say i accept the risk um oh that was the easy one uh, unaccept risk uh so that is kind of for forever and you can go to the this more detailed risk acceptance where you can say i would like to accept it but only for a specific period of time uh, like until march uh 22. so then afterwards i would like to get informed again so you you, you, when you get information, you can directly say, ah, okay, thank you. Uh, I will take care later. You don't have to react right, right away. You just, the only reaction which you have to do to not get the information every day is to go in here and say, I accept it for a period of time. The problem is, as you can imagine, that people are not doing it. And then when there are too many information coming every day, they see it as spam. So that is a problem I'm facing, especially for this uh, base image lifetime and image lifetime scans. All the others, they take care a lot, but this ones, uh, they don't care. They say, ah, base image team, oh, yeah, yeah. It's, it's some uh, teams, not all teams, just some teams. So are there different strategies which we could uh, use now to solve this problem of information? Um, when so what we have to minimum uh, take into account is the interval of of notification like do we do it every day or do we do it only once in a week uh, and as i told you there is a vulnerability management which is actually perfect um to to handle findings directly also at what is the severity of an image age that is very hard to say for me uh, but the problem is that after a while, let's say 20 days, there are definitely vulnerabilities inside. So in case we would use a tool like Trivi, it would definitely show uh, vulnerabilities which arise in the past two weeks. So what are your thoughts? How would you handle that? Do you need more information to have a discussion? I think that might possibly be a good idea. Nightly. Did I understand correctly? Nightly is your suggestion? I know I said it might be a good idea to give a bit more information before. Ah, okay. <laughs> Bit more information sorry yeah uh so what do you need to know uh what 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 uh are we, i can we can start with uh the severities which we are having right now um i actually never summarized them malware which we saw right now has a critic has currently the criticality high um and uh, when we go to dependency check, there the criticality is taken from the 
from the yeah, the generic uh, CVEs. So there uh, we are having no influence. A distroless currently has a medium as a, a rating. Um, then we have the lifetime check, which is currently which is currently, I think, also medium. Is it not defined here? So it is, oh, it's high. The lifetime check is high. Uh, that is just my orderings, right? So you can have different opinions here. You say like, lifetime high, why would that be high? Um, then we have the malware one, which is critical. Uh, the new version, which is currently, currently high. Yeah, is it high? Yeah, that is a question here. Currently, what I'm doing, just to explain why it's high, is uh, I inform the development teams every day when it's critical or high. So it's medium. Currently, I'm not sending out any information. And then we have the run as root check, uh, which is medium. Because there is a false positive rate is a bit higher because it's currently not checked how it is actually start in the cluster. So when it's in the cluster defines that it starts as a specific user, which is not root, then I'm absolutely happy and they don't need to change the image. Yeah, so how do we inform teams? Is it an idea, for example, for the base image lifetime? Let me take that. It's just an indicator that there are vulnerabilities. So uh, one thing which the de developer said, which he would like to have, is only every seven days. So why would I get this information every day, he said. Um, I argued that you can go to Defect Dojo and accept it for temporary time, which you define. It's your, def your definition. You just need to say how long. As an alternative, you can also um, use the annotation to say this image typically gets uh, 200 days or so I don't want to get informed before 200 days. Um, so that are all things which can be configured. But he said, yeah, I'm not having time to configure it properly. Yeah, so what should, I, should we do here? What should be the default? Okay, when you come up with a conclusion afterwards, feel free uh, to discuss it with me in Slack or we open, uh, open an issue in the project. I uh, see so that we can uh, discuss it in more detail. Okay. Um, yeah, now uh, we, we can come to the conclusion and open questions uh, afterwards. So the conclusion for me is that this is a very useful tool um, to, to automate how containers are used. Um, even though I'm, the developers are not happy with, and let me go back to the, to the overview slide here with all the checks. I'm not so happy uh, with, the, with the base image lifetime here. For me, it's very happy. And I think I will start to create KPIs, how old the images are and report it to management in the board uh, in the different uh, companies I work for. So that uh, we get, we at least can see that it's getting better or worse. So there's a notification. Uh, I and we as a group didn't come to a conclusion today. So maybe that will be, uh, we will come to a conclusion later. Um, in addition, I have to say that this is a setup which uh, will take some time. So you you shouldn't say, in, in, you set it up in, in half a day and then it will work all smooth. No, uh, that takes a bit more time uh, from my point of view when, you, when, when I would do it. Uh, it would take around one day in case you're doing it as someone who hasn't the, used this tool beforehand, I would say you need close to a week, maybe just three days, but you will need some time to get to, 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 to know the different technologies like Argo workflows, like Defect Dojo, uh, the cluster scanner, the cluster image scanner itself. And then you can go and make your tests so that will take some, uh, take some time. And then you maybe figure out that your cluster is not set up in the way you need it. 
uh, and you need other things so that that all takes some time so it's not a not a fast project uh, in case you want to use it daily I think when you want to just make a proof of concept on your local computer then very useful is uh, to set up mini cubes that's how I test it um, if you have here the test folder uh, and here's a mini cube setup so you just need to install mini cube on your computer and then you can run this mini cube setup script and it will do everything for you uh, except defect dojo so you, you just need to set up a defect dojo in addition and point uh, uh, the setup uh, where uh, the, the defect dojo is um, reachable and that's pretty cool this mini cube setup we will also enhance it as it gets this gets much better uh, we want to automate tests um, uh, so we will make this mini cube setup even better uh, usable. Yeah, and so that's from my side. Do you have a uh, question which we haven't covered uh, so far? I think that's it for questions. There's nothing on the chat. Feel free to post something on the chat if you don't actually want to um, ask in person. So, Timo, I think that's it. All right. Okay. All right, thank you very much for joining. Um, this will be posted on YouTube afterwards, so you can have a look again. If you do think of any questions, um, I'm sure Timo will not have a problem with you contacting him on Slack and asking them. You happy for that? Yeah, sure. Oh, there I just see that someone asked for the for the link in chat uh, in the chat, so I will do that uh, quickly. Oh yeah. Here you go. Andre. Okay, we'll also add the link to the website as well. So if you can't see it on the chat, once we've gone, I'll make sure it's added. Okay. All right. Brilliant. Thanks very much.